Hi, I've got a number of strategies that will help you improve your ACT scores. Uh, this is my strategy number three, smart guessing. So if we knew how to do every single ACT problem and never ran out of time, uh, there'd never be any need for guessing. Uh, but the reality is we run into, um, we get stuck on problems and we run into time constraints. So there are times when we need to guess, but we can make that guessing a lot smarter. Rather than just picking a random one out of five guess, uh, there's strategies we can use to make those guesses a lot better. So I've got six uh, ACT problems here that we're gonna go over and we're gonna do smart guessing with to show how that strategy works. Let's take a look. Okay, so I've got six problems from the ACT practice test that are gonna demonstrate how we can use smart guessing when we're either stuck or running out of time on these. So let's take a look. We're trying to find the perimeter of this. We've got 20 here, um, 20 here. So the perimeter is gonna be about 20, 20, 20, and 20, right? So if we're gonna guess at this, um, 400 is way too big, 160 is way too big, um, even 120 is way too big. Um, 40, we already, just between these three pieces, we already have 40. We've got 20, 12, and eight. Um, so that's too small. And that focuses right in on our answer here. Now, if we had um, answers here that were like 78, 80, 82, 84, it'd be much harder to guess at this. But because we have such a large spread in the answers, uh, we can really focus in on just taking a quick look at this uh, diagram that that we can just take a look at it and say that it looks like about 80. Okay, in this triangle, um, they're looking for the midpoint of AB. So that's going to be somewhere around here. So the midpoint of AB from A. So we're even looking for this length here or this length here okay so now if this is 24 right so let's take that same 24 this is 24 so let's take that same 24 and see where it would end up here right so if we kind of took that same 24 and flipped it up here that means that this length here is less than 24 so that eliminates those two answers we can do the same thing over here. If halfway over here is 16, and we take that piece and put it over here, then 16 is gonna be less than what we're looking for. So 16 doesn't work. So we're really, if we're guessing, we should be focusing on only these two. And all of a sudden we're at a two out of five, um, I mean a, um, a one out of two instead of a one out of five, uh, which is a much better selection. But you can even go a step further. You can take a look at it and say, why would they have 40 as an answer um, when all these other ones are much different in size and they've got 40? Well, it turns out that they have 40 as a, um, a tractor in there because the whole thing, so if you read it wrong and found the whole length of 40 rather than the point from A to the midpoint, um, which is going to be 20. So if you look at that, that's very curious that they have 40, and that would, out of these two answers, that might get you in the direction of 20. And that actually ends up being, uh, turns out to be the right answer. Uh, but even if you just chose between these two without looking at the 40, you'd at least have a much better chance of getting, getting it right than just randomly picking uh, one out of five. Okay, so in this one, they're trying to find, um, we're trying to find uh, the length between the two sides. So we are trying to find this, between the 10 and the 16. Um, so even just looking at that, obviously 16 and 10 are too big if we're trying to find this. Um, and this has to be smaller than five, right? If this is five, then this, can't be five. So that gets us down to three and four 
are our only real logical choices. And you could stop there and guess. Um, you could guess that, or you could go a little further and say, look, if this is five, right? Let's see what five looks like on this, right? So let's break it into five even pieces. So though that's what five looks like, right? So then if we do the same thing over here, if with that same distance. Right, so these, each of these little pieces, we're kind of matching to match over here. So if this is five, it seems like this is about four. So just taking a look at the relative sizes, um, you could get that uh, this looks like four if this is five. So that would focus us on that answer here. And again, if you if you only got down to picking between three or four, you're still at a much better chance. One out of two is much better than one out of five. If you go a little further, and focus in and see that it, it actually is um, answer B. Okay, so this problem, a lot of complicated stuff going on here. Um, but again, we can make a good guess if we don't have time or we don't know how to do it. So here it tells us that all the way across this pool is 24 feet. So obviously the radius is gonna be 12. So we know that this is 12. And we're trying to find this and this. That's the amount of the zipper. And the problem it tells us the zipper is going to be here and here. Um, so we can take a look. And as this is 12, it looks like this piece here is about as long as that, maybe a little shorter. Um, so certainly 57 is way too big. If this is 12, those two pieces together are not going to be um, 57. Um, in order for it to be 29, this piece would have to be almost one and a half times as long as the 12. That doesn't make sense. Um, and it doesn't make sense the 17 is way too small because that would mean this has to be about half, right? And we can see this is to, to, to scale because if you look at, if this is 90 degrees, they have the 45 degree drawn accurately and you have to draw a circle accurately as well. So um, we can we can see that that is is relatively to scale. So the only two answers you should be even focusing on is the 22 or the 24. And then it's interesting they put little ticks marks here, right? Like I did on the last one. I think it is to demonstrate where the zipper is. But if you look at it, they actually have it tick marked out at exactly what the right length is. So one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. They have a tick mark off at twelve. And then if you count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, this is going to be ten. And so that leads us to um, twenty two rather than twenty four. And it, even if they didn't have those tick marks, you could put those tick marks there. You could kind of guess, you know, you could put a tick mark at half at six and then again at three and you can figure out the relative sizes and really focus in on, on, on a good guess. And it, um, if we did that, G is actually the right answer. All right, on this problem, we're trying to find D, B, E. So D, B, E, we're trying to find this angle here. So let's take a look at um, what, um, this angle. So let's extend this and say for this line, a right angle is going to be about here, right? So the 90 degrees is going to be about here. Now let's split that in half and go 45 is going to be about here, right? From this, that's 45. And from this, that's about 90. Just n drawing what we know angles to look like. Right, so that means that this, the angle that we're trying to find, is going to be greater than 45, but less than 90. So if it's greater than 45 and less than 90, that takes out all of those answers and leaves us with this. Now here you do have the wild card here of E cannot be determined. Um, so you can either make a choice between B and E, or you can think about it a little further and see if it makes sense that it wouldn't be able to be determined. With these two being parallel, um, we actually do have a lot of um, we have a lot of relationships. Um, 
here with, with bisectors, we know this, and we know this, and we can, well, there's a lot of things that we can determine. Um, so it does make sense that there's going to be enough information um, to find out that that's 60 degrees. But again, even if you're guessing between the two, you've got a much better choice. And um, so we would choose B as our answer there. Okay, so here, what's the difference between the mean and the median? So we know that the mean and median are usually going to be pretty close unless the data is wildly spread out, right? So that may be something that you know about a mean and a median. You may have heard that um, the times are different is when you have data with really big outliers or, um, or it's really skewed to one side, then it's going to be much different between the mean and the median. Um, but if you look at this data, it doesn't look like that. It looks very evenly distributed. So we're going to have a small difference between the mean and the median, not a large difference, because these are evenly spread out. So certainly 9 and 12 are out. And if you look at it a little closer, um, to have a difference of 4 between the mean and median seems kind of high, too. So the, really the two that you should be focusing on is here. Um, if you wanted to take a, a, a random guess at that point, if you didn't have enough time, that would be fine. Um, but these three are just not logical answers to, to answer. Uh, and that's why we never just take and answer C or D quickly when we don't know an answer. Think about it a little bit and you can at least eliminate those three answers. Now as it turns out, um, if you look at it, it's exactly evenly spread um, from a median of 9, which um, the answer is going to be zero. But if we had to, had to just guess between the two, we're at a much better, much smarter guess than just randomly picking um, one out of five answers. Thanks for watching. If you have an ACT test coming up, good luck with it. Um, if you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. I've got other suggestions of videos for you to watch right here. Uh, please comment below on things that you liked about the videos or ways that I can improve it. And thanks for watching and come back again soon.